Well, we have reached the finish line of the summer shift presented by U.S. Steel. Ten episodes on the docket. This is episode 10, and we finished strong with Penguins defenseman Marcus Pedersen taking some time with us. Uh, Marcus, the summer winding down, training camp closing in. Great to see you. Appreciate you taking the time. Yeah, sure, Josh. Uh, great, to, uh, great to be here and uh, back in pit right now, getting getting ready for a season to start. It's been uh, it's been a long summer, so we're excited here. It has. I'm sure you guys envisioned it going a little longer as far as uh, the start to your summer being concerned. Uh, but it did start, obviously, on the earlier side after the first round loss to the Islanders. What, what have you been up to since then? What's been going on as far as, you know, your training, uh, your preparation for this season, and maybe even just away from the rink as well? Yeah, I've been back home uh, in Schleftia, uh, where I live in the summers with my, uh, my girlfriend and my dog. Uh, I've been working out, you know, skating, working out. Uh, been back home, uh, yeah, all summer. Uh, so, uh, been meeting family and stuff like that. So, uh, like I said, it's been a long summer so far, and uh, we're excited to get back now. Well, we're glad you're back in Pittsburgh. Uh, I know Pittsburgh certainly has its locations where you can get out on the golf course and play a little bit. I know that's something you're interested in. Was that a part of your summer in Sweden? And what are the courses like in Sweden? Seems to be a pretty countryside, at least from the pictures I've seen. Yeah, yeah, it depends where you are. I, you got to remember, we're far up north, so uh, we don't get that 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 great golf. But uh, we get off out every now and then. But um, Usually it starts around July and it starts getting good, the courses, because of the weather. So, um, I mean, I just got back a couple of days, so I haven't been out here yet, but hopefully get a get around in before camp and see how the courses are here compared to, to back home. I know they're different for sure. So um, that's something, something that I'm interested in for sure. Yeah, I think your teammates, you have a few takers there. Uh, <laughs> as far as like guys that want to go out and, and play golf with you. Um, I know you're into golf. Uh, you mentioned your girlfriend, your dog. I remember also talking to you a couple of years back, and we got into a little conversation about basketball. Yeah. Um, now, I got to say, like, when I think of Sweden, um, basketball doesn't necessarily even come, like, on the radar. It's no. just no, – no offense. It just doesn't it doesn't sound like something that would come from Sweden. Just like a lot of people, you know, the United States, they're not going to talk about soccer first and foremost, even yeah. though it's the world's most popular sport. Basketball is huge in the U.S. I wouldn't think it was as big in Sweden, but you obviously have gotten into it. How did that happen, and, and you know, what has kind of led you to getting more interested in it? Well, I mean, like you said, like soccer is the, the biggest sport in the world, and the U.S., they don't talk about it that much, and it's the same with basketball. I feel like – Basketball's up there, uh, being one of the biggest sports in the world, and and all the the stars they have with the uh, past and present. Um, uh, I think for sure it's getting bigger. And and you, I, I know Europe uh, is pretty big on basketball. They have like a Euro League kind of thing there. Uh, it's getting bigger in Sweden, but for me, I just I don't know. I uh, I, I I played a little bit um, like school wise. I, I was in a couple of tournaments. I wasn't really huge with it. I was focused on my my hockey and, and stuff like that. But um, I don't know. I was tall as a kid too, so I, I guess the the teacher wanted me to to give it a try a couple of times. And I mean, it's a great sport. It's uh, such a good way to like interact, just get out at night and shoot some hoops and stuff like that. So it's it's a really nice sport. I think about, you know, it's interesting, a lot of good basketball players, especially on the taller side like yourself, they've they've gotten nicknames. You think about Hakeem the Dream, Olajuwon, yeah. uh, you got Shaquille O'Neal, just Shaq uh, yeah. with his name. And then we have the Dragon. Yeah. And that's a basketball nickname. For it is, it is. So I'm glad it, it, it How traveled so far. How Pedersen become the Dragon? That was actually one of the things uh, when I was in school and, and our teacher – there he was he was really interested in basketball so the PE teacher um, he, he was in charge of the school team um, it wasn't like really big we played a couple of tournaments here and there um, but he uh, it was me and another guy that was like tall the tallest kids we were really tall back then uh, if you compare and he, he used to call us the two dragons clashing so um, I don't know I, I think I told that story to to some guys in Anaheim and then when uh, when I got traded here, uh, Derek Grant was here, and he, he brought that over a little bit, so I got stuck with it. So uh, I know a couple of guys still still call me that, like KC calls me that, and stuff like that. So it's I mean it's something that travels, and uh, it's not really a, a basketball nickname like that, but it's it's um, it's got a basketball background, if you can say that. 
Fair enough. I mean, hey, listen, I've been waiting for a reason to talk, reference some kind of dragon reference. And yeah. Scott so maybe you can give me a reason for that this season, right? When yeah, yeah. Watching. Hopefully, hopefully. Yeah. You mentioned from Sheleftia, Sweden. Yeah. I think I said that right. Yeah, yeah. Um, I was looking at some of the notables. I like to do that. Wikipedia is great for that, Pete. Yeah. Uh, and I came across Victor Arvidsson, Adam Larson, Oscar Lindbergh, all guys obviously that have played uh, in the National Hockey League. Are these guys that you're playing with in the summer? Are you skating with, friendly with? I would assume like it, it's not a huge city from what I remember. No, no, but it's a, it, it's, it's a small city. It's a very small city, but it's, it's hockey crazy. And like you said, a lot of guys – that that's come out of the team um, is playing in either in NHL right now or in in the KHL. Uh, Oscar Limber being one of those. Um, we even got Raquel in Anaheim. He's living there. He's not from there, but he's living there. Okay. Um, who else? We got a couple more guys um, that that lives there, and so we're a great group group of guys. We're like 12, 15 guys that that work out with each other. We skate with each other. Um, so it's great to have, even though it's a small city, like you say, and, and be able to live at home, not close to your parents and still get that quality, quality training. It's, it's huge. So, um, yeah, it's a hockey crazy city for sure. I, I, you mentioned it being a hockey crazy city and you mentioned your parents and I, I had the, the pleasure on the father son trip a few years back. I think we were in Boston. I yeah. got to seat on the bus next to Daniel Pedersen. Yeah. And we had a great conversation. It was freezing in Boston, but he was telling me about how much you like Pittsburgh because it reminds you of home and it reminds yeah. you a bit of she left you. What is, you know, I guess, what are the similarities? I know there's a bit of an industrial background in she yeah. left compared to Pittsburgh. Yeah, I mean, like like you said, the, the climate is kind of the same. It's a little bit colder back home and, and darker. So, uh, but but like like the mentality of the city is, is kind of the same. You know, it's a working, working city that people work hard. Uh, for a living, they they love their sports, like here with football and, and hockey and baseball. So um, that's that's kind of the comparison that I like. Like you can feel the heat of of the city, whole the whole city being being behind you. And I felt that playing at home and and even watching growing up and and how good the teams were um, back when I was a kid or a little bit younger. Um, and they they would win. They would go to the finals five years in a row, and you can you can feel the whole city kind of breathing hockey. And um, it's been my experiences so far here in Pittsburgh is the same. You know, it's a it's a work in work. It's a city that works hard, um, industrial background, like you say, and they they love their sports. They get so passionate. And it's so fun uh, being a part of. Yeah, they care about their teams. Obviously, you're a big part of one of them there with the Penguins on the back end. Uh, but you mentioned your dad and, and just some of the finals that they had gone to in the Swedish Professional League over there. Uh, he was pretty modest when we spoke. And then I read about him afterwards, a decade plus as a pro hockey player over yeah. there in Sweden. Yeah. Right before she left you for a little bit as well, if I'm not mistaken. Um, that obviously had been a, kind of a cool wrinkle for you growing up. And you mentioned just the excitement within the city and the passion within the city. But I imagine that had a pretty big impact on you as far as a career choice also. Oh, for sure. Um, I mean, I played a lot of sports growing up, like we talked about before, basketball. Uh, I played soccer as well. It's, it's big in Sweden as a kid. When you play in the summer, you play soccer, and then you play hockey in the winter. And then, like you said, with the career shorts, um, with my dad playing, I remember being as a kid, they weren't as good when he was playing. I can say that, just get that out there. But uh, Because of him? Yeah, no, no maybe, <laughs> maybe. If you ask him, he'll say no, but maybe uh, okay. but um, I mean being around the locker room when I was a kid I remember running around and seeing all the players and stuff like that and being able to be on the ice sometimes after practice it's for sure something that that sparred me to to want to be a pro hockey player and and really be successful because I mean I love playing hockey but maybe if I didn't have my dad maybe I I wouldn't have set my goals early like I did and he talked about that a lot that that um if you want to be go to the highest level you can you gotta you gotta be a pro and um you can't just well if you gotta play for fun but you you gotta put the work in and and some that's something i for sure have, have brought with me this this whole way this whole trip definitely you know if, if you see it you can believe it type of thing which yeah. obviously was there for you and your dad you know when i get ready for these interviews pd i do a lot of 
digging. I try to find some stories from my friend Michelle Crecchiola that she's written on PittsburghPenguins.com that can um, unload some dirt on you that I okay. can talk about with these things. And one thing I came across, uh, and I'm just going to quote you here because I want to understand what this means. You are an educated carpenter. Yeah. Uh, so I in, in high school um, back home, you kind of choose your line, what you want to do for a living, like, what you want to work with so they have in high school you can choose like um, economics for three years or you can choose uh, um, electrician or something like that and and so I um, going into high school I, I chose to I wanted to do some practical uh, so uh, I started I think it's it's called carpenting I'm not sure with the language barrier here but okay that's uh, right so like in the first year of high school we we had I think it was three days of, uh, of school work, like regular school work. And then we had a shop uh, at school where we built like small, uh, it could be a sauna, it could be a storage unit, um, stuff like that with, that we built. And then in second and third grade, you kind of progress. And in and, um, and third grade, you, uh, or third grade of high school, you, you, kind of, you kind of go out into the companies and, and, and work as an apprentice. Uh, basically the whole the whole school year so it was something that that was really cool and and really fun to to do like um not just sitting in school but having that option to to be out and do practical stuff so um i'm educated in that i'm not going to say i'm good but uh i ha i have an education in it that's a yeah that's a good way to phrase it actually because it kind of sets the expectations at a yeah level. yeah so I, that's my my girlfriend tries to have me do stuff around the house sometimes but I, I tell her I'm I'm uh, I'm educated. I'm not good, so uh, <laughs> doesn't always go seasoned. hand in hand. Those two things. Yeah, right. Educated, not seasoned. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, there you go. What are what are some projects that you've done? And I'll tell you why I'm asking that after you answer this. Yeah, uh, I've done some doors, um, like putting in doors. Um, okay. I've uh, this summer actually we actually built a new house, or I didn't build it. But, I was about uh, to say. Yeah. <laughs> no. 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 Uh, but we built a house last last winter back home, and and uh, so we did some of the uh, like a fence, picket fence around um, stuff like that. I I did some in the in the kitchen. I I, I drilled some um, like fronts and stuff like that. So um, I haven't done any projects, but uh, um, just small stuff here and there. The reason I ask is because we've had a couple previous of these summer shifts, and in particular, two guys that jump out to mind are Mike Matheson and Zach Aston Reese, mm -hmm. uh, that both are woodworkers. And it kind yeah. of, not just like saying, oh, you know, I've, I've sawed something in half and like, you know, drilled some, a hole in a wall no. and put a picture up. Like, they're making charcuterie boards, they're making kitchen yeah. tables. Like, were you aware of these things? Uh, I was not, no. Okay. Uh, they haven't really talked about it. I've talked with, uh, one of our security guys that works at the rink, Lou, he, um, he, he's a woodworker as well. And he showed me a couple, ever since I saw I was a, a carpenter, he showed me all the time, like, look at this, what I made and stuff like that. So um, I'm not really, how do you say, um, good at, at those things. Maybe I can, um, like, um, I can screw a deck together and I know okay. how to do that and stuff like that. So. But I wasn't aware of that they do security boards and, and woodwork like that. Like that's real handy and good for them. It is, yeah. I feel like you guys could start a little side project. Yeah, I know, right? Yeah. We're gonna travel get, band of get together. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, exactly. And Reeser can play the guitar and, and, and do uh do woodwork. So he's uh he appears to be a real uh real handyman, so good friend. I mean it'd be like the answer that no one would think of if you said like a Swede a Canadian and an American walk into a bar, it's like, well, they're carpenters. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You would never guess. <laughs> no. uh, well, that, that's good. Thanks for playing along with that. Um, so I want to get you our question here from your friends at Penguins on Twitter. Okay. Uh, they have thrown it out there with another note that we know that you're a big Game of Thrones guy. Yeah. Uh, obviously, a couple of years in the past, as far as the most recent uh, Game of Thrones episodes that were out there, but uh, who is your favorite character if you had to narrow it down? Ooh, it's tough because the characters kind of go up and down. Um, but I mean, I, I always liked the uh, the Dragon Queen, Khaleesi. 
um i think she was a great character and, and to see how she she progressed in the show but too bad she kind of went crazy at the end so that i kind of lost it for me a little bit but otherwise i liked i like Tyrion. i think he's real smart and funny to listen to um and i mean the whole stark family i i it's kind of the the way everybody i think i everybody loves the stark family even though almost all, all of them died but um <laughs> i think um if i want to narrow it down i would say maybe Tyrion. i think he's really fun to watch in that show and to see how he goes from being one of the enemies in the beginning and then he, he's a really great guy in, in that show so um i've actually heard about game of thrones that they they're planning to do a new one so um, i'm excited about that to to see how um how valkyria or was it valkyria or valyria valyria that's what it is i think they're about to do a show on, on how it was when the the dragons lived so um That'd be fun to see if, if they actually did that. Would you have any interest? I know that I've seen, like, just reading some stuff about the show that occasionally celebs, athletes make cameos. I mean, they usually die in, like, a fight scene. But would, yeah. you, would you be interested in just going out there? Oh, I don't know. I, I don't think uh, I'm stick to woodworking and then carpenting, <laughs> I think. I don't think acting is my thing. Okay, too. fair enough. Uh, I think you're a natural for what it's worth. Yeah. Uh, I, I have an admission, actually. You're talking about all these ins and outs of Game of Thrones. I've actually never watched it. Oh, really? Then you uh, have a mission. I, yeah, right? So I, I feel that like was, there's a certain show. But you, but you kind of missed the window, though. Like, the, the lockdown was kind of the window to watch that show. So. Right, exactly. Uh, and I just got stuck on Netflix with, like, Tiger King and all that stuff. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, but, you, you know, it's... It. It's funny because I was thinking about, I'm like, okay, so like you, you meet some people sometimes that are like, you know, I've never seen Star Wars and like yeah. just have massive reactions and lose their mind. And I was like, you know, I kind of feel that way a little bit about, about Game of Thrones when I say that to people because they're kind of shocked it's so popular. I mean, it's not yeah. no good reason for why I haven't watched it. I just never really have gotten into it. Well, you gotta, you gotta like give it time. Uh, it's not something that you just throw on in the background or something like that. So. Maybe that it's a it's a pretty hard show to watch. I remember, I remember I started watching it and then I stopped because I didn't really understand any of it. And then I've actually watched it. I, I think it's three times now. And the second time is always the best because you kind of understand the ins and outs and how the families work and, and stuff like that and and the map of the whole world that they have. So um, okay, it's really something that you you got to give it. You got to have a schedule for it if you want to start watching it like this this is game of thrones time nothing else uh, matters at that point that's good okay that's good to know that'll be my approach yeah. do you have anything like that where you're like uh yeah actually i've never seen that or like never eaten at a place like that or, i don't know a movie wise I'm, I'm pretty good uh i've watched a lot um I can't think of anything right now, actually, but it's a good question. Occasionally, um, I have one. Uh, I remember, I know one movie or a couple that I've never watched that that's like up there on the you know the IMDb top hundred or whatever it is. Yeah. Um, I've never watched um, uh, Pulp Fiction, actually. Okay. I know that's a really popular movie, and it's it's a, it's up there on the top lists. Uh, <laughs> But I've never watched that, and I've never watched. Um, ooh, what's that? The the French movie's name, where the guy in the wheelchair and the the ex con kind of uh, works for him. Ooh. It's a real popular movie. You uh, I don't know. I don't know what it, I know the the word and uh, what it what's it called in Swedish, but not in English. So that's Fair another enough. one I haven't watched. Um, cool. So it's a couple, but it's not not many. I've I've watched a lot of movies. Okay, good to know. I mean, that's that's something else interesting. So, did you get into movies just with like the the nature of hockey and the traveling and everything? Did that kind of turn you onto it? Or yeah, kind of. But we've always been like that. And I mean, growing up too in our family, we like watching movies and and uh, and stuff like that. So it's it's actually a pretty funny funny thing my uh, to to compare my my family with my girlfriend's because. Uh, We've talked about it a couple of times at some family dinners that uh, we have this problem in our family that when we watch TV, we you can't really talk to us. We kind of zone out to the TV, and they they can sit down and talk, and we kind of zone out. So we we were talking about that, and, uh, and 
like how interested we are in movies and they can throw something on and, and have a conversation be nice to each other in the background just have the tv on but <laughs> in our family we, we're like this we can only do one thing so um that's something that i'm i'm it's always been like that we we watched a lot of movies growing up i mean in the winters especially it's dark and it's cold and just to have something to do uh if you're not out like playing street hockey or whatever you can watch a movie and stuff like that so um, that's something I think I've always been interested in. All right, Marcus Pedersen, movie guy. Yeah. There's something new here today. <laughs> Carpenter, movie guy, basketball player, everything. I mean, yes. uh, hockey guy, you know. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> First and uh, foremost. Yeah, right. First and foremost, definitely. Yeah. Let's run down this last array of questions I have for you, and then we'll be all set. Um, Want to know first what your – it could be one, could be others, uh, but a superstition that you have, something that jumps out to mind when I say that. And I, I have to say, Petey, that like a few times in this conversations I've had with your teammates, I'm sure you know this now having been here for a couple of years, but anyone who's new to the Penguins, it's almost like a birthright to become superstitious yeah. just watching you guys from afar. So I'm yeah. curious what you have. Well, I have a, I'm not real crazy uh, with superstitions, but like you said, when you come here, you kind of learn that, <laughs> everybody does things at the same like it, it can look from the outside like chaos but it's for us it's controlled chaos and <laughs> everybody knows where everybody is at a certain point in time if it's a game day so um i mean i always start warming up off ice at the same time uh, i do my same thing so i always stuff like putting your right skate on and right sock everything like that uh, um what else like i always go to go to take a nap at the same i always eat the same thing so uh, i had a couple of things but for sure like you said when when i came here um i picked up a few more and and uh and stuff i i wouldn't say it's uh necessarily superstitions all the time but kind of routines as well um uh, just to have and and it's something that you can always fall back on so um i don't know off ice routine or superstition that i have i know is uh when I go to the bathroom, I always have to check the doors locked three times. So that's something non-hockey related that, that I always do. Um, so that's a superstition, actually, that, that I have. But, um, I mean, I, I always start working out when the game's, game clock starts. That's maybe something that that uh, is a superstition of mine. Okay. That's good to know. I mean, some superstitions are beneficial. Some... Or yeah, they, yeah. yeah. But when you when you had them for long enough, you, you kind of realize that they're not superstitions because you kind of do them uh, on auto autopilot kind of. Right. You, you don't even think about it. So, um, a couple of those things. More routine, right? Yeah. yeah, 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 for sure. All right. So, what is something that you can't live without, or something of great significance that you possess? Ooh. That is a good one. Well, I drink a lot of coffee. I, I know it's coming over here. They, we sweep, we drink, drink a lot of coffee. So um, that's probably something that, that I have to have. I mean, on a game day, I probably drink around six cups of, cups of coffee, five, six cups of coffee. Um, so I would say coffee is, is, is up there. Okay, coffee high on my list too. I mean, your former teammate, Patrick Hornquist. I've never seen somebody drink more coffee in a yeah. span than that guy. So yeah, yeah. He's so also. <laughs> that's always when when we go out to restaurants uh, with the team on on road trips and we go eat and I have a coffee after dinner and then they look at me like I'm I'm crazy. But um, <laughs> that's that's always something that we do and we we have ficus in the afternoon with with a coffee and a little sweet. So um, after every meal we have a coffee. So that's that's probably something I would say I, I can't live without. All right, fair point. Um, you mentioned you were back in Sweden for most of the summer before coming back to Pittsburgh. Any vacations you took? Any special destinations? Uh, no, we stayed stayed back the whole time. Um, I, I well, I went to a, a ski resort in Sweden for for a wedding. Uh, okay. Uh, but not really a vacation. It was just uh, a day, a two day thing. So. Um, we um, we uh, we try to cherish all the all the time we get at home with our family and stuff like that when you don't see them for for half the year. So, right. um, so we we just stayed back this summer. Okay, oh, never a bad thing to hang with family. Exactly. Yeah. 
I think we're about to turn a corner here in this one, PD, because I'm going to be curious and I'm honestly just going to be straight up with you that I'm not sure if we were listening to the same music when we were around the same age. But what I've had your teammates do is if they could think back to the very first album they ever owned. Okay. And there's obviously got to be, you know, a hit song or two from that album. If one okay. One. So what I need you to do is mm -hmm. hum the song for me. I'm going to try to guess it. Okay. I, I, I want to know before how many have you had right? Like, uh, I would say, so this is the 10th one. I would say I've probably gotten about four right. Last one I got, though, uh, who did I just do the ninth? Oh, Brock McGinn, your new teammate, was yeah, yeah. Big and Rich's Save a Horse and Ride a Cowboy was his first song. Oh, okay. <laughs> so. uh, this is not going to be, I can give you a hint, this is not going to be a, a country kind of song. Um, uh, I might be screwed already. But my fr I, I actually do remember my first CD that I got, and it was actually a DVD of, the, of a concert as well. So um, I'm going to try to hum it and see if you can get it. If I'm not very good at humming, so if you don't guess it, maybe it's my fault. But okay. Um, I feel like I should know. It. Like that's no, no. You, you probably don't know it. Uh, uh, boom, boom. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. That's the 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 chorus. Uh, I I can't really remember all the all the different things about the song, but that's how it starts anyway. The, the, okay, I gotta be honest. You're the best hummer so far. Okay, like, by far. Okay. I so just don't. Your... I don't know. I don't think I know the song. <laughs> okay, it's uh, it's Linking Park. Uh, I remember oh. I had their uh, I had their DVD from a, a concert in I think it was Texas. Uh, somewhere, um, and it was the end with uh, Linkin Park. Now that you so say that, now I like think back to the humming. It, it was uh, pretty spot on, actually. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah, not bad. It, it, it sounded good in my head, at least. <laughs> I'll see you after <laughs> that, if I can guess it. That's half the battle. Yeah. Uh, all right, two more things. The second to last thing, have you ever played Two Truths and a Lie? Uh, yeah. Okay, so we're going to do that right now. Okay. Uh, I will also tell you that you're the tenth person. I'm probably batting about five hundred on this. Okay. So that's some guys that's not have, bad at all. No, not at all. Some guys have stumped me. Some guys have not. I started off terribly, kind of picked myself up in the middle. Um, but basically, for everyone watching, if you're not familiar, Marcus is going to give me two truths and a lie, but he's going to present them as three truths, and I have to guess the one that's not true, if it's correct like i guess the run that's false i win if i guess something that's true you win so okay okay well you kind of pricked my brain already you should do this in the beginning of the because you know everything now <laughs> good to like. know for next time uh, i'm gonna think for a while here if you don't mind okay i'm i'm uh, i think I, I have a couple of things okay um when I was 20, I, um, I went parachuting uh, as a birthday gift. Um, and uh, I owned a pet rabbit when I was a kid. And I always wanted to be a goalie when I was a kid. Wow. That's definitely the hardest three that I've ever gotten. Um, that's why I was thinking so long. That's, I know. Hey, you had the brain going. Um, Owned a rabbit. I feel like the first one you gave me seems like it could be a really cool birthday gift. So I'm going to sidestep that and say it's true. I think it's between the rabbit and the goaltending. You said you were tall when you were younger, but a rabbit just seems too random. I'm going to say you wanted to be a goalie when you were younger is the lie. False. It was the parachuting thing. Oh, I'm terrified of heights, so oh, <laughs> I even no. hate flying. So I, I've, <laughs> parachuting is something I would never do. So I, I actually had a pet rabbit. Uh, it was pitch black rabbit, and me and my sisters uh, got him. I think we were, yeah, we were little kids when we got him, and we had him for a few years. And 
I remember I, I always wanted to be a goalie. Like when we played street hockey, I was always a goalie. Um, I actually played goalie a few times, like growing up playing. Uh, but uh, I, d I never got like a goalie mask. So I just played with my regular one. So I don't, I didn't want to do it anymore. So that's why I didn't play goalie. But I, I do it a couple of times in the summer. I got, I borrow the, the the goalies gear that we that we play with and we we have fun a couple of times or one time in, in the summer uh, so i still do it um uh, so that you're not batting 500 anymore too bad no, no i end on a sour note i'm, I'm not happy about that uh, <laughs> I have to hash this out when i see this is here. the finale too so you can't re redeem yourself That's, no you ruined it for me yeah. <laughs> that's all right I'll, I'll survive uh last thing for you pd one recommendation of something that you're currently into, and this is more for the fans out there as we wind down summer and get ready for hockey season. I mean, it could be a TV show, a book, movie, a song, podcast, anything like that. Um, actually, uh, I just started watching. Um, I was talking with – I work out with Raquel, too, in the summer. Uh, okay. And him and his uh, wife, it is now, uh, they started watching all 24 Marvel movies in, in like, chronicle, chronicle order, or whatever yeah. you say. So um, it's not when the movie come out, but when when it's taking action, the actual movie. So I'm, I'm in the middle of a, a Marvel's mar marathon right now. So um, that's something that maybe people should look into it's really funny to see and understand everything when you when you watch it in the right order yeah i hadn't realized that they were out of order when they came out so that shows you how yeah. much i know on that yeah. yeah yeah pretty cool all right well i really appreciate your time marcus i know uh the days are fleeting between now and when the puck drops in the preseason on September 27th. And then of course the regular season on October 12th in Tampa Bay, but we can't wait to get it going. We're looking forward to seeing you in person here in training camp in a couple of weeks. Uh, thanks again for taking the time. Good luck this season and talk to you soon. All right. Thanks, Josh. Pleasure being here. All right. That is Penguins defenseman Marcus Pedersen, the 10th and final guest here on the Summer Shift presented by U.S. Steel. Big thanks to U.S. Steel for bringing this to Penguins fans all summer long. Big thanks to all 10 of our guests for making it happen. And a huge thanks to Jen Bolano Ridgely for making all these players sit with me and deal with me for the 20-plus minutes in each and every episode. Really appreciate her help as well. Thanks to everyone out there for watching. We'll see you in training camp preseason and the regular season soon enough. Have a good one.